address the police brutality across well, the country, we'll see, yeah. you know, could have implications for I don't know, he, he, other there's a couple, he hadn't called in, so I don't know exactly what he has. Appreciate you should be out to court. Hey. Jim Fry and Mike Cornelli are back together again, and they're working on a super collider follow. I mean, the homeless issue, the drug issue, we are now having to confront on the street all of the omissions that have happened uh, where people, for one reason or another, can't or, or be taken care of. I know they want something fed for midday, but I've got to think about trying to write a package later, too. Do you want him to call the car, or do you want to call her? Okay, I'll call the car. Okay, I'll call the once the press conference starts, and you'll have an opportunity to shoot him wheeling in right here. But just give us a moment when he gets up here and okay. gets settled, okay? Yeah. So he doesn't start firing into a statement or something like that, and we miss it. And I will walk again. Were you scared? Were you fearful? Or did you feel you were getting enough of a, I guess, a prognosis at the time about what was ahead of you? Making sure that Terrence Mann was okay. Making sure that Corky was okay. Here we are. That would take us into the bite. No, hold on. Let's start with this crazy here. Yeah, we're rolling. Just keep rolling. Okay, there's that one. Okay, what are we doing here? Okay. Show him wheeling. Sports is next on midday, and coming up, Major League Baseball umpire Steve Palermo talks to reporters for the first time since he was shot. In yeah, Dallas. fight. And he was shot in the back as he and other customers tried to break up a robbery on the parking lot. The bullet nicked Palermo's kidney and injured his spinal cord, which impaired his ability to walk. There's still some questions to be asked and hopefully answered. How many arrests, any injuries, if any? Time I'll drive Star Cam out there. We could just do some nasty sounds. I don't know which is the best pictures, really of those four schools. Tonight she's got a story set up about Spanish training for police officers. Mike, you ready? We can maybe just, let's just walk a little bit. You want to do that? Is that all right with you? And um, we'll talk about the kids and what we see. The people and... across the street over there, they give me food and stuff and I help people out over here. And they're suggesting, you know, maybe a thousand dollar tax credit per child. Would that make a difference? Oh yeah, it'd make a lot of difference. And then they give you food stamps, and that's what you live on. If you don't have money for Cokes or anything like that. When you get reports about cases out here, or you just you took some notes, I mean, what now? What happens now? You deal with, with people who are poor all the time. Well, in, in the case back there, I was told about an elderly couple who are very poor, and I can come back out here and assess the situation some more and see what services I can bring into it. Did you see a lot of people around here who were having a hard time because they yeah. don't make enough money? Mm -hmm. That people across the street over there? Mm -hmm. One of five Dallas police social workers who try to connect them. All right. Because it modifies workers rather than walkers. Okay, all right. Sorry. Well, thanks. Long time that I was moved. Just go on. This is Dallas, where poverty and children share the neighborhood. 13. Some days, Kelly Coyle just. And his mother holding the baby because she puts her head down. Remember that? 13 million American children, one in five, live in conditions like this or worse. Run soon. What is two thirty four? Yeah, I don't need it. Right. Yellow guy. Very little footage. Let's 
I mean, there's no time for, there's no money to enjoy anything. Under my cue. Parents and their Ready, children three, two living shot, in poverty. One box. National call to declare war on problems facing America's future. Good afternoon, and thank you very much for joining us. Chip Moody is off tonight. Many children grow up happy and healthy and strong, stable families, but one in five grows up poor. Today, a joint presidential congressional commission issued what's being called a bold and loose America's families. Channel Roll it. Report. Take it. This is not a ghetto in New York or Los Angeles. This is Dallas, Super. where poverty and children share the same neighborhood. 13 million American children, one in five, with conditions like 46 dollars. Karen, I have some questions about the script. I am, I'm a, a little uncertain about something. It says, the first attempt at an out-of-court settlement in this case. And tonight, we'll also have comments from Judy Nelson, former girlfriend of tennis star Martina Navratilova. Saw the late update about um, Martina Navratilova's publicist. Well, she's trying to change her script. I thought she knew that when she left the clubhouse. No, she didn't. No, no, that's a late statement. That's a late development. This morning, that's what we said in our six o'clock. Well, no, no, this is more details. Uh, there are more details here. Okay. But anyway, she's been she's been revising her track now about three times. So sh that might be very tight. Martina made an offer that's obviously lower monetary wise. Nelson has indicated she might accept the money, but she's, she may have accepted R Martina's lesser money offer, but she refuses to accept the offer. Acknowledge. But yet it is Nelson that's going to be sleeping on the offer. It's almost the same picture. It's, it's how we'll see. You know I'm not going to tell you very much, don't you? <laughs> Go. ISD administration building where a crowd is already formed inside trying, trying, to trying to get the details, the details of Dr. Edwards' rehiring plan to rehire 270 teachers that were laid off last week. Channel 8 will be here through the evening to bring you the details Five, of the rehiring plan four, as it unfolds. Three, I'm Ana Martinez at the DISD one, administration one, building. Girl, yes! Here's a change on graphics. Here's Carolyn change on graphics and I need to talk to her again. I can cut his picture out and then just call it up and put it over that background if that'll be enough. I said 95 individuals who signed up to speak for one minute each and several of them as presented by the superintendent and seconded by Mr. Jones. You're not reconsidering, even though it states reconsidering, you're in effect on amending, amending previous something that is You mean, will we be doing a live shot from here? At yeah. Yes, we will. But we probably have enough inside now. We'll, we'll kill the sound bite after the applause, and then we'll go to another one where he says, yeah, I don't like the divide and conquer air. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, 27 it is. Uh, after. Six, two, seven. Go ahead and get three. Get away. Okay, whoever edited page four. Be Marvin Edwards sound bite with Bob Baker. Yeah. Yeah. WFAA-TV. News 8 presents... Okay, we are in the open. You're coming up at about 25 seconds. Channel 8's Renee San Miguel is at that school board meeting and joins us now live. Renee? Well, Chip, the hottest ticket in town right now is a seat in the DISD administration building's boardroom. Between seven to 800 people, according to officials here, are crowded into every available room to hear how the board is going to vote on Superintendent Marvin Edwards' proposal to bring back all the laid-off teachers and how he's going to pay for that. The board hasn't voted yet. Back. Half a Super. percent more than what they were The board has not voted yet, correct? Uh, okay, you're going to say that, right? Anybody in the end? Coming back to you in five. He's going to say that, Chip. Stand by. Anybody in the end? That doesn't benefit anybody in the end. And out. Go. All right, Renee, a very full night for you. Hi, Steve, it's Terry. We got a shooting in Highland Park, maybe multiple shooting. I'm sorry, at University Park. It's at 4044 Amherst. 
and transported one 18-year-old with a GSW to the head. Critical condition. I understand two, two people shot, right? I mean, it's that's like an attempt. Two people were injured at this time. We don't know how it happened, so that's you know we're still trying to piece it all together. Okay. But assistant chief will be here shortly. Received a 911 call from a man here at the residence of 4044 to the University Park. Uh, all he said was that my child, my baby's been shot. Uh, he hung up the phone. We didn't have anything further from him and dispatched officers to the scene. We had to drive something, would, would that be it then? But we're all through the same, so just blow it off. To see if that um, prisoner yeah, I'm trying is to find still... The sheriff's department won't confirm anything because the guy's not there yet. Yeah, they said there was two, two, char two charges, one aggravated kidnapping, so, the other one because of the warrant. So okay, so... So he's charged with aggravated kidnapping this thing. Yes. I'll print the second one from upstairs. In the spirit of Texas, WMAA TV News 8 presents Quinn Matthews. In the news this morning for the first time. Roll 42 sounds full. Hey Marla, call me when you're able to and I'll tell you where to find the kicker video. Stand by roll 142 now. It's on the ABC News. I'm on. A year after unification, Germany is divided in spirit, this time by racial violence. Five away, ready to box, and roll your brake and fade to black.